Today I'm kicking off a brand new mini series where we kind of deep dive on self-organization and how to empower yourself and your business, especially if you're feeling so totally maxed out, you just can't focus on high level strategic leveraging stuff. Come join me. Welcome to the Leverage Business Podcast, where we believe business success is about working smarter, not harder. Leveraging your time and expertise in ways that fit the digital age you and your clients live in today. I'm your host, Jay Allison, author of Leverage Consulting in the Digital Age and founder of the iSuccess Business Academy. And every episode, I'll be sharing insights into how you can apply the power of leverage to grow your consulting, coaching, or other expert services business and create true freedom and independent success with mindset, marketing, and money model breakthroughs. Because when you get leveraged, the sky's the limit. Let's go for it. Welcome everyone and I'm really excited to be launching off another three-part mini-series. This is what you say you like is to have it in small chunks over one topic where you can really deep dive and we're talking about self-organization today and it's not the sexiest topic in the world Um, and sometimes you might think of it as self-management all the way through to self-care. Well, over three parts, I'm going to be sharing 21 ways that you can organize your life, home office and routines in order to feel like you're in control of your business. We'll look at how to set things up so you can really power through everything you need to get done and want to get done without burning yourself out so that it's sustainable. Today in part one, we're going to focus on ways to de-stress your personal life so your business life isn't cluttered with distractions. Who can relate to working from home when you suddenly realise the wet laundry is still in the washing machine? Have you ever ended your day only to realise you never pulled anything out of the freezer for dinner? What about when you're so maxed out you can't focus properly? I'm going to go through a set of practical tactics to get these things into order so you have space and focus for strategic planning as well as building more leverage for future growth. We're handling that typical dilemma of how do I work on the business when I'm so busy working in the business as well as everything else that I've got going on in my life. Next time in part two, I'm going to share some simple routines to eliminate day-to-day stress And then in part three, we'll finish up with eliminating stress in your day-to-day business. I'm often asked personally, and I mean genuinely, I get asked this at least once a week by colleagues, family, clients. They say, Jay, you do so much. How do you manage it all? Well, this is why I've decided to do this three-part series, because it's not so much that I have this cool piece of software or even because I've got a team. It's because of a series of things that I've put in place um, over over years and not all at once that have been able to allow me to eliminate many of the constraints to productivity. And this is also not to say I'm 100% down with it, right? I also have days or weeks when I feel overloaded, when I didn't get things set out too well. But I always go back to my basics to get my ducks back in a row, so to speak, so I don't feel overwhelmed by it and I don't burn out. There's a rhythm to your business that you need to get so that you're able to enjoy more fun, flow and freedom in your in your life and it not all head down, you know, get the work done and then collapse in a heap. Doesn't that sound good? Fun, flow and freedom? Okay, so let's go into a little bit of how we get there. Now listen, I totally get how frenetic running a business can feel. Right now I am crazy super busy. I'm in our busy peak period with two back-to-back events pretty much. But I'm good with it because I've got a lot of processes, systems, team tools to enable me to get a heck of a lot accomplished in any given week. Does it sometimes spill over into my non-work time or into my weekend or my days off? Sure, it's not fail-proof. And I'm okay with that as long as it's not all the time and that what I'm doing is sustainable over month by month, year by year. And through this, things seem to right themselves. So my boat never capsizes. Today, I want to start by just painting the landscape a little bit and 
for people to understand that it's quite normal that we have this. You know, we're busy people. We like to be productive. We're very creative. We have lots of ideas. But putting a plan in place and having some kind of boundaries is really what keeps things sustainable moving forward and keeps you from going crazy and getting burnout. So part one is going to be gearing up to getting off that work home, work home, work home treadmill. Do you struggle to find the focus space to work on key growth stuff? You'll often hear people distinguish between working on the business and working in the business, as I mentioned earlier. And it's the latter that tends to max us out if we don't have good self-organisation And if we're not thinking about the infrastructure to support getting more clients, we're never going to get over this situation. We touched last episode on tangible steps that you can take to drive more referrals to your business so you can scale it. But if you're busy delivering to all those wonderful new clients, how can you work on the next level growth strategies? The answer, and of course, you know what I'm going to have here. The answer is leverage. Think about the key places that you need to be building leverage into your business. That is your key business operational processes and the team to support them as you grow. On the ground, there's plenty we can personally do to set ourselves up for success as you start to implement those leveraging plans. However, the reality is most of us are now working from home, such that our home life and our business life, our personal space, and our office space are mixed very much so. Not only are we looking at self-organization in our business activities, we have to carry that into our entire life activities. Managing ourselves in time has become pretty important, right? And the practices and techniques that used to work maybe aren't as effective anymore. Do you feel that? I use the phrase managing ourselves in time deliberately There's a ton of books and courses you can do all about time management and productivity. But honestly, there's no such thing as time management. Time is fixed. We all have 24 hours in each day, seven days each week, 365 days in every year. What you can do is get better at managing yourself in those time periods with habits that create space, reduce stress and enable strategic thinking. I'm writing this in the office in a real peak time in my calendar, just before the dip coming through. Actually, it's not just December. April, August and December are months in the year where I lift off and get off the treadmill for a while. It suits the acceleration programs that I run, which are on a 90 day cycle. So that's become my annual rhythm. Now, how about you look at your own annual calendar? What's your cycle? When do you run your courses or programs? When do you kick off new clients with a service? When are your promotional launches happening? Is it all in the same week? Week on week? Is it head down until your next vacation? Or do you spot intense peaks and then more relaxed dips? According to times where you'll be setting up or actively promoting something or onboarding clients versus when you've just delivered a program. If so, then you'll know there are times where you're leaning in and being hyperproductive, and that's cool. But it's not sustainable if that's the only way that your calendar looks. You have to balance it daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, with times where you're able to lean back, rest, reflect, relax, recharge. That time where you're leaning in with high productivity should be in spurts, not a constant treadmill. When do you take space across the year to lean back for more creative, restful or strategic space? Last August, I had the nicest leaning back time. I did an amazing staycation, dog sitting the most lovable and easy little dog called Buttons. I absolutely adore him. And if you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, you'll probably have seen a few photos of our walks and time together in the beautiful countryside in England, in the Surrey Hills. This is my time to declutter my head, decompress with a big inhale of nature, fresh air and fun and time to see friends. I do love my work and it's really easy for me to just work, work, work. 
But I recognize also the power of the recharge. It's amazing to be away from all things work for a while, but I do find it hard to step away. It takes me a few days, sometimes even a week. And once I do, then it's equally hard to get back into my normal routine. So I created some smaller ways to relax, particularly when the weather's not so great. As well as being an avid reader, I'm a huge fan of jigsaw puzzles. It's the most unproductive thing to do in the sense that you painstakingly put all these little pieces together and you searching, searching for all these um, things that have to fit into a small hole, looking for specific colors and, you know, furrowed brow while you really search and search. And then you look at it for a few days once you've completed it and scrunch it all up again and put it back in the box. I mean, how mad is that? However, there's something really innately relaxing and rewarding about pointless work. It stops my mind racing around on so many other things. No wandering to productive thoughts where you're looking for that one piece that's red with a big piece of tree or skirt or fur and and has three outies and one innie. That's what they call the tabs and the blanks on puzzle pieces. And apparently each type of piece has a name. You could really get into this if you were like hugely nerdy, which I'm not quite there yet. Anyway, um, it's very interesting how We find these things to stop our busy brains, to quieten the noise, whatever it is for you, because actually that's where some of your best ideas come from. So whether it's a walk in nature, doing a puzzle or just chilling and, you know, watching some rubbish TV, whatever it is that you need to do just to have that space, an empty workout for a while that allows other things to come in. Anyway, I know it can be a bit of a slow engine when you're getting back to things after the holidays. And certainly if you feel yourself slowing down as you approach the holidays, like Thanksgiving, Christmas, you start believing that you'll pick up momentum again in the new year when it's not so busy. And next thing you know, you've lost not just a couple of weeks, but two months. So I do have a little surprise to get you fired up and ready to show up back after the holidays with amazing energy and focus in January. I'm opening up spots again for my 90-day leveraged business accelerator program. And I could even fit in a few early access strategy discovery calls in late December if you're raring to go. So if you're ready to rev things up going into the new year, I will share later the what, why and how details in an email and on the show notes for this episode. So make sure that you're on my mailing list, either opt into my insights newsletter or any of the free stuff, which you can find under the academy menu at jallison.com. Right, so let's dive into the focus for today's part one, decluttering distractions is what I want to look at. Let's start with why time management is a pointless pursuit. Now, when you're working from home, these little chores like hanging out, washing, planning your dinner, dashing out for milk, they may seem insignificant little chores and we're all used to having to do them. But when these distractions continually interfere with your work day, your productivity can really suffer, particularly if you're dashing around between calls to fit in what you need to get done. And when you succumb to these tensions, what I've certainly found is you're not fully focused and you feel that you're getting pulled in different directions and it's really hard to bring your attention back and bring your A game to your business, your clients, your projects when your mind's kind of scattered. And certainly distractions have the potential to impact more than just one day. They can ruin a whole week and that's going to have a knock-on effect on your revenue and your progress for growth. But look, it's not all bad news. Here's the good news. I have advice on how to get organized so you can start your work days without stress and with feeling empowered. Let me share where I'm coming from on this. Although everyone who knows me personally and professionally knows I'm a process girl, super organized, always finding ways to do things more efficiently, more effectively, more economically. But I'm definitely not Little Miss Perfect in the area of self-management because I'm a little OCD. Okay, I'm a lot OCD on certain things. And when I see a job that needs doing or a notification from a team member or a client pops up, once I've noticed it, personally, I find it really hard to just wait, just to let it sit. Even when I'm already super busy with something very important, with a deadline, etc., that I've got to focus on. 
They tend to bounce up and do it right away. Or I'll whiz back a reply so it's dealt with promptly. For the beneficiary, they love that I'm so responsive, of course. But for the focused work, it's a really bad habit. Like many of us, I also can readily use distractions to procrastinate on doing something that's either hard or I don't really relish doing. Nonetheless, with a bit of regular mindset retraining, what I've been able to do for myself and my sanity is create some boundaries. And when I make enforcing those boundaries into somewhat of a fun game, I find I do stick to my self-imposed rules. Just like with our self-limiting talk, when little me pipes up loud saying what I can't do or will be rubbish at or what I ought to do when I get a WhatsApp message from a family member or close friend, I go find big me to shut that voice down and stay on track with why I'm doing what I'm doing, that it's important to achieving my business goals. With improved boundaries and self-accountability, you can overcome poor self-organization, aka self-sabotage. And nowadays, I can spot it easily. I see what I'm doing. I also can no longer fool myself when I'm passing off procrastination as perfectionism. I recognize the distraction triggers and the way that it screws up my focus. And now I laugh about how I would have flitted around in the past doing bits and bobs and not getting to the important stuff that really moves the needle in my business and helps me get things done. As I've heard said, done is better than perfect. Put another way, taking imperfect action keeps you moving forward. So I wanted to focus this mini series to help you if you've got these kind of challenges with self-organization yourself. In part one, I'm looking at the areas of your home life where working from home can wreck your creativity and productivity and seven ways that you can turn this around. Then in part two and three, we'll look more towards de-stressing your business. If you keep putting things on the back burner until a time you get some clear space in your day or week, then you're definitely going to need to tune into all three parts. Altogether, you'll be getting 21 ways to organize your work from home business for more fun, flow and freedom. Let's start with jumping off the homework home treadmill. Let me know if you can relate to this scenario. Your alarm goes off in the morning and you grunt while turning over to find the snooze button. You allow yourself a quick snooze because you know the kids have got to get up and ready for school or they need their turn in the bathroom to get ready too. This was me a few years ago. My kids aren't in school anymore. They're grown up. But that's how things ran. Once you get home, it's time to prepare for your day. Sorting, planning, client calls, client reports. Your brain runs down your to-do list. Depending on the length of your list, you might ask yourself why you're working so hard on this business. And even wonder if it'd be less stressful if you just found a regular job. Is this a picture of your life right now? Even if you're single and don't have kids, can you relate to wanting to sleep more or have more downtime, have more fun? What happened to that innate excitement you used to have about building a business so you could live the life you dreamed of on your own terms? If you feel like you're on the eternal treadmill that just keeps speeding along in one direction, Let me reassure you that you can stop it, jump off and create an organized life that isn't so stressful. Only you can decide which clients you want to work with and which programs you want to run and how often you want to run them. You are in control of your pricing and how much time you take off. If you dream of having a virtual team, only you can make those hiring decisions and let go of some control so you can delegate work to this team. My point is that every one of us experiences peaks of work, lows in your energy, motivation and mood, and stresses in your business. It's a fact of life. However, recognizing our reactions to these ups and downs is what will ensure we keep things in a positive frame and allow us to shift our mindset so we can find more peace and joy. So I wanted to focus this mini-series to help you if you've got these kind of challenges with self-organization. In part one today, we've looked at ways in which your home life and working from home can wreck your creativity and your productivity for your business. And in part two, I'm going to take you through a whole list of practical ways you can turn it around. And then in part three, we're going to look more towards de-stressing your actual business. If you keep putting important but non-urgent things on the back burner 
until a time where you get some clear space in your day or week, then you definitely need to tune in to all three parts. Altogether, you'll be getting 21 ways to organize your work from home business for more fun, flow and freedom. And I'll be sharing a great checklist that you can use to hold yourself accountable to the rules and boundaries that you put in place. It may take a bit of time to adjust, but it's also a huge game changer when you implement these strategies. So make sure you subscribe so you get an alert when the next episode article is published. Bye for now. Ciao, ciao. Thank you for listening to the Leverage Business Podcast. If you're enjoying our content, it would be great if you could pop into Apple Podcasts or the app you listen from and leave me a rating and review. Everyone makes a difference to improving our rankings. So thank you if you've done that already. I appreciate you. I wish you a pleasant, productive and profitable week. And I'll see you again next time for another episode of the Leverage Business Podcast.